Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Intuitive Angling. I really appreciate you guys taking some time out of your busy schedule to watch the video. It's always appreciated. And today I'm going to give you guys some tips and advice on the two different sizes of pork frogs available out there. The regular size and the jumbo size uh, made by Papa Ease. This is the pork frogs that I'm using now. Um, we talked about this a couple weeks ago, made in Kentucky, uh, all American made. You guys can order this if you just go to the Facebook page and type in Papa E's Pork Toads. Uh, you can order them directly from there, just like I do. And uh, I'm really excited about it because I've been a huge fan of pork for my entire career. And everybody knows that uh, Uncle Josh went out of business about 20 years ago. And I'm finally very thankful that you can get a good pork frog now that Papa E's. So I plan on really using them a bunch this coming season. But anyway, I've had a ton of experience with experience with experimenting with different sizes, and I want to go over that real quick with you guys. Real quick, before you get started, just wanted to remind you guys a couple of different housekeeping tips. Uh, if you guys are interested in, in uh, Johnny and I's on the water, or excuse me, our online seminar, January twentieth, we've got an advanced jerkbait seminar. It's a three-hour online seminar, limited to thirty people. We've got four slots left in this online seminar next Thursday. If you guys are interested in that, you can just go to fishthemoment.com and sign up for it there at fishthemoment.com. Uh, much appreciated with that. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the, the frogs here. So here's the two different sizes that, that, that Papa E's makes. This is the jumbo size here that we talked about uh, before, and this is the regular size here. See the difference is it's, a, it's, a, it's smaller, not a much smaller, but it's a little bit smaller. You can see it a little bit better on, on the back portion of the fat there. That's probably a better, a better description of it there. So um, anyway, the question is, is when to use which? I mean, when do you use the jumbo and when do you use the regular size? So right off the bat, it has a lot to do <clears throat> with a lot of different variables. <clears throat> it has to do with the jig size you're using. It has to do with the water clarity. It has to do with the size of the fish you're after. Um, a lot of different conditions determine the size of the bait that a bass wants. In general, I always start out with the jumbo size. That's my favorite size. I get bigger bites with it. Um, throws off a simply, it's a bigger profile, bigger bait, bigger profile. I always start out with this initially. And if I don't get bit on it, then I can downsize. But most of the time, the best time that you want to fish a jumbo frog that I have found it's during the pre-spawn time of the year. Um, fish seem to like a bigger crawdad during the pre-spawn. It's a time when you're flipping and pitching heavy cover, like flooded trees, flooded bushes, any type of flooded grass, thick cover, like laydowns. A lot of times they like a, a, the bigger size. And then you have another window that is in the middle of the summer, like when, when it's super, super hot. That's the time of year I like to take the bigger frog, the jumbo frog, and use it on a heavy size jig to get a reaction strike. So um, that's normally what I start out. But a lot of times, guys, what I found that happens, especially in a tournament, is I'll start out like in practice and maybe the first couple of days of the tournament, uh, catching them on the jumbo size frog. And then after, as the tournament wears on, the fish maybe get conditioned a little bit to the larger size. And that's when I drop down to the smaller, the regular size. And say, for example, if I'm fishing the jumbo size on a half ounce jig, like a big full, a, a full skirted, a full profile jig, half ounce size with the big number one uh, a, a jumbo pork on it, um, I'll downsize to maybe like a three eighths ounce jig. I'll, I'll trim the skirt back a little bit and then I'll put the regular size frog on there. It just gives it a smaller profile. And normally I can pick a, I can continue catching fish by downsizing a little bit with that. A um, couple other different situations at work. I'll, I'll, I'll share with you guys one of the tournaments, the uh, Ranger M1 tournament at the Mobile Delta um, in uh, in Alabama. I finished second in that tournament. Actually, I won the tournament. If it was a cumulative weight, I would have won it by 15 pounds, but it was one of those deals where it was a cut, and I, David Dudley beat me the last day of the tournament. But throughout the course of the tournament, I was catching them on a, on a big frog, a jumbo frog like this, and... Uh, in practice and throughout the tournament. But the last day of the tournament, um, I got out there and I, I fished for like two hours and never had a bite on the jumbo frog. And 
um, I noticed the water had cleared up just a little bit from where I was fishing. So I took that, I went down for my half ounce jig and I put a quarter ounce jig, you know, with the small, uh, smaller chunk, like a smaller toad like this on there and wound up catching the biggest limit that I'd caught all week long simply by downsize and in the same water that I was fishing. So normally, a lot of times, um, the smaller frog will work a little bit better if the water's a little bit on the clearer side. I don't use the big frog, the big jumbo frog, very much if I'm fishing water visibilities that are like over three feet, unless I'm fishing real thick flooded cover. For example, down at Bull Shoals Lake in Arkansas, I've had some outstanding days there flipping a jumbo frog, uh, the big frog, in water visibility of over 10 feet but when the water was super high, flooded in the willow trees, flooded in the bushes, that type of stuff, they, they bought, bought it really good. But it's about like anything else. I mean, when you're thinking in terms of using the, the bigger frog versus the smaller frog, sort of think of it in the same terms of like on a shaky head. If you're, you know, using a seven inch trick worm on a shaky head, sometimes you have to go down to a four inch finesse worm to continue getting bites. It's the same deal with your pork frog size. Um, it just... It's a matter of adjusting uh, the profile of the jig, the weight of the jig, to the external conditions you're fishing, which are the water clarity, the water depth, the type of cover that you're fishing. So mix it up, experiment. That's sort of the rule of thumb for me. Um, I'm going to be doing a lot more of these videos on frogs because there's a lot to do with frog modifications, different colors, that type of stuff. And remember, this coming Friday, we're going we're gonna to have our video on my new Blockett's Old School Jig coming out on this Friday. And paired up with the Old School Jig, nothing more is going to be more old school than going pork on the Old School Jig. So I'm going to do a lot of videos with pork on the jig, along with all the Zoom plastic trailers that I still use um, quite heavily too. So there's a time and place for all of them. There's a time and place for pork. There's a time and place for plastic. And I'll do the best I can to give you guys some good tips and advice on when to use under what conditions. So anyway, thanks for tuning in, guys. Please hit that subscribe button if you haven't, and we'll talk to you later. See you.